Friday Football Fever, sponsored by GTCC, Hardee's, and Shift Ed. Welcome into week eight of Friday Football Fever. Week eight, guys. I can't believe it. And we are going to take you around to some of the best matchups all over the triad. And we'll start with our GTC game of the week, which takes us up to Eden. And it was homecoming for the Panthers, but their rivals from Mick Michael were looking to spoil the fun. However, the Panthers got on the board first as Yaquil Peanut Dungy takes the handoff and gets in for Moorhead. They lead it 6-0, but here come the Phoenix after a long 13-play drive. Jaden Moore coast in for his first of three touchdowns in the first half. And Moore and his O-line were on the same page all night. But on the ensuing kickoff, it's Uno. Dominique Harrison cutting across the field, and when he sees daylight, he turns on the after boosters as he takes this one to the crib. 14-6. Moorhead and Uno was putting on for this city all night long, but here come the Phoenix QB Jace Dunn. He goes to his number one target, Brady Elrod, and Elrod brings it in for the score. McMichael wins it in a shootout, 63 to 34. Still ahead of this edition of Friday Football Fever, some big games around the triad tonight. A Davidson County rivalry matchup between Oak Grove and North Davidson, Randleman taking on Providence Grove, and many more. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Friday Football Fever. Oak Grove and North Davidson kicked off with the winner remaining unbeaten in conference play. Early on, the Grizzlies getting down the field. Connor Creech handing it off to Isaiah McGuffin, who runs it through all the defenders to get across the goal line. Oak Grove up 6-0 after that. Now, shortly after, Gavin Hill handing it off to Xavion Hayes. We heard his name all night. This guy's fast, getting the first down here. One of his best runs of the first half. It helped set the Black Knights up to score, but on fourth down, the Grizzlies bringing downhill. Later on, Aiden Daughtry kicking a field goal to extend the Grizzlies' lead here. Oak Grove winning this one 30-14. Randleman made the road trip to Providence Grove for a Week 8 matchup with Providence Grove. First quarter, Randleman QB Christian Long drops back and goes deep to Tyshawn Goldson. He fights for a little bit of extra yardage before eventually being brought down near the 20. Now the Tigers unable to punch it in, but that's okay because Christian McLeod is going to kick this one right through the uprights to give Randleman a 3-0 lead. Second quarter, Long dropping back, throws it up for Goldstone again, this time making a leaping grab for that touchdown. Tigers increasing their lead, and just before the end of the half, Providence Grove quarterback Andrew Kander dropping back, connects with James Ellis, and he sprints past all the defenders. Looked like he was shot out of a cannon for that touchdown, but Randleman wins this one 30-14. And East Forsyth looked to move to 7-0 on the season as they took on Parkland this week. And to no one's surprise, Jalen Rayner balled out as he throws it up and connects with Quashawn Brown for the 25-yard tutter. And the Eagles defense came to play as well. Isaiah Kimbrough with the big hit. He lays the wood. They're setting the tone for the Eagles defense all night. And they were just getting started. This time it's R.J. Brown coming up with the sack for East. And you know what time it is. It's Jalen Rayner time. This time, the screen pass to Omarion Holland, and Holland does the rest. He's in for another Eagles touchdown. East Forsyth wins it 59-zip. Western Alamance look to get back in the win column with a victory over Williams. Early on, Warriors' Chris Cagle Jr. gets in the backfield, sacks Jalen Brown. This time, Brown connecting with Dan Mahan for the touchdown. The Bulldogs lead 7-0. Williams defense playing well. Zion Aiden I coming up with the tackle for loss. Later on, Jacob Carter kicking a field goal for the Warriors to cut the lead to 7-6. Then Kali Rich Richmond on the carry and he leaps into the end zone. Williams goes on to win it. 21-10. There's that leap there. Now I hit up a big rivalry matchup between Northern Guilford and Northwest Guilford. Vikings up 8-0 in the first. The handoff to uh, Gabe Salazar who breaks a couple of tackles for power on his way into the end zone to increase Northwest's lead. Second quarter, Northwest QB Tanner Ballou throwing it up to Trenton Cloud. He corrals it in the end zone for the Vikings third score of the first half. The Nighthawks need an answer. Play action, QB Alexander Marsh rolling to his right. Let it go to Tyler Moscow with the fingertip toe tap and sideline catch. Then Marsh throwing to the end zone, finds a wide open Bobby Naley for their first score of the game. But just before halftime, Ballou finding Cloud once again, and this time, he He's going to take it all the way for a touchdown as the Vikings cruise to a 52-20 lead, a win over the Nighthawks. And Walkertown continued conference play with a home matchup with North Forsyth. And we start with more defense as Mitrin Curry comes up with a big hit, knocking the ball loose, and there's Chris McCorkle there to scoop it up for Walkertown. And here come the Wolfpack. It's Zachy Mitchell. He punches it in for the Wolfpack TD. Unfortunately, extra point, no good, 6-0. But here, here they are again. This time, they're looking to add to their lead as Kenyon Smith scores. But here comes that Vikings defense as they are at it again. Jacob Patterson laying out for the big-time interception. Walkertown wins it 20-12. We'll be right back with more Fever after this quick break. 